Well, welcome to Easter at Central Trinity. So great to have you with us today. I'm Pastor Steve Judson, the lead pastor here at Central Trinity, and uh, we are so excited that you're going to be able to join uh, in on what I believe is going to be a wonderful celebration of the resurrection of Christ. Hey, I want to give just one quick announcement. Beginning next Sunday, we will be offering two uh, distinct worship services, our Ignite non-traditional service at 9 and our 1015 traditional service at 1015, uh, both on Facebook and then later uh, cast or saved over to our uh, website, uh, centraltrinityumc.com as well. As we enter into this time, I want to invite us to join together uh, in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for the fact of the resurrection, the reality of Christ's resurrection from the dead by your power and God presence in our lives today. God, as we move through this time of worship, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be present among us, within us, all around us, as we express our joy, our gratitude, and the celebration in our hearts that Jesus had power over death, that he is indeed Lord of all. God, we offer this time, give it to you, ask that you would use it as only you can do. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And the people of God said, Amen.
Thank you, Jim and Andy, for that stirring piece. As we continue in worship this morning on this Easter Sunday, I invite you to join in singing together the first verse of a wonderful collection of some of the great hymns of Easter of our Christian faith. to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he talks with me 
I invite us at this time to take a few moments this morning in prayer as we reflect on God's goodness. Maybe your prayer is giving your thanks to God on this Easter Sunday. Maybe your prayer is a request, something that is going on in your life that you're asking God for strength. Maybe that prayer is just asking God to work powerfully in the midst of what we are facing now as a nation. Whatever that is, we invite you to take a moment of personal and private prayer just right here together, and then I will uh, offer up a prayer on our behalf and conclude with the Lord's Prayer. May we pray. God, we thank you for the privilege of prayer, of coming to you, God, with all that is on our hearts and our minds and our spirits. This day we do celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. God, we pray that you would hear the prayers and the praises of your people and that you would be among us in the most powerful and yet precious way. God, we, we pray for our nation, for our leaders, for all of the things that they are dealing with in the midst of this coronavirus world in which we find ourselves. Ask that you would bring healing and wholeness and victory over this virus. God, guide us as a people as we move forward into the future, whatever that looks like, knowing that it will be good if you are leading and guiding us. God, we pray for our church as we continue to seek to share the, the love of Christ and the light of Christ to our community and world. And God, we pray that you would give us guidance as we continue to do that. And we're just grateful, God, for the opportunity to be together in this time via the technology that you have made available. Lord, in these moments, we also join together in praying that prayer that you taught your earliest followers to pray, and we join in now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen and amen. Please hear these words now from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and verses 1 through 6. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said.
Most all of us know what it's like to put in a hard day's work on the job. Most of the time, things go pretty much like what we'd expect them to, and not a whole lot out of the ordinary happens each day. But from time to time, something really interesting and exciting happens, maybe even life-changing. In some rare cases, it may even change the course of human history. Well, that happened to me one time nearly 2,000 years ago as I was just doing my job. I was proud of the fact that I was a, a citizen of what we considered to be the greatest civilization in human history, the Roman Empire. And I was made it great and kept it strong. I was a soldier of the Roman Empire. The fact that I was assigned to a place way out in the sticks an area that you all know as modern-day Israel, one of the more remote places in the empire, didn't exactly thrill me. But I was still a Roman soldier, and in those days, that meant something. Anyway, I was assigned to a, a small group of my soldier buddies to serve as a special guard to a group of Jewish religious leaders in their most important city, Jerusalem. That didn't excite me much either, as I definitely didn't like following orders from these non-Romans. I didn't really like them much, period. And, and we Romans, at least I thought at the time, were much better than them anyway. But as I already mentioned, I was just doing my job. Well, at one point, the whole city, it seemed, and especially the religious leaders that my group was assigned to, went into an uproar. It was all about some man named Jesus that the Jewish religious leaders said was a heretic because he was claiming to be the Messiah, the special one sent by God to the Jewish people to liberate them and bring back the old days when they had their own nation, which of course would mean getting rid of we Romans as well. This Jesus, it was said, even claimed to be the son of God. Now, the idea that, that this Jesus was the Son of God didn't make any sense to me. We Romans believed that there were many gods. But if there were only one, certainly he would be related to Caesar, the great Roman emperor. And not one of these lowly Hebrew people. They were nobodies. The religious leaders got so angry, they even demanded that Jesus be crucified. A terrible way to die that we generally used on thieves and murderers, oh, and anyone else who challenged our authority. Personally, I, I think that most of the Jewish people didn't really have a problem with Jesus. Some of them even loved him, but their religious leaders, oh, they hated him. The local politicians didn't really want to get in the middle of it, but one of them, a man named Pontius Pilate, finally gave in because he was afraid that it might be bad for him if he had to call in more of us soldiers to put down a rebellion. Even though Jesus really didn't do anything wrong, it was easier to crucify him than to deal with an angry mob and, and get on Rome's radar. We were going to crucify two thieves anyway, so adding a third person to the mix really wasn't all that big of a deal to us. But when some of the other soldiers led Jesus away, the crowds that, that followed and watched were much larger than normal. It was actually kind of creepy as people lined the streets, some crying, some kicking, some, some spitting, and, and just many shouting hateful words at this man. I have to confess that even many of us soldiers were getting a little carried away, beating him placing a crown of long, sharp thorns on Jesus' head, pushing it right down into his skull and causing the blood to run down the sides of his head. Some of us laughed and made fun of him, but others of us were nervous and more on our guard than normal, even for an execution. When we had Jesus to the place where he was going to be crucified, we used nails instead of ropes, which were normally used, to secure his hands and feet to the cross. We had been ordered to place a sign above his head that said he was the king of the Jewish people. This really upset the religious leaders who wanted Jesus dead, and they demanded that we take it down. But orders are orders, and we left it 
just like it was. Once Jesus was hanging on the cross, things got really strange. The skies clouded up and it got almost dark as night. This lasted for three hours, even though it was in the middle of the afternoon. It began to storm. At one point, Jesus even cried out to God, calling him Father and asking God to forgive those who were responsible for killing him. 
Was he losing his mind? I mean, come on, if I was the one hanging on that cross, practically naked, thorns in my head, spike-like nails through my hands and feet, I'd be filled with hatred. Forgiveness would be the last thing on my mind. I would want everyone responsible to die, and their families too. I would want everyone who even agreed with my death to die. I would want revenge. There he was, bleeding all over the place, slowly suffocating as he drooped lower and lower, and yet offering forgiveness even to those responsible for his death which I now know he didn't even deserve. It just didn't make any sense to me. At the end of those three hours, Jesus cried out again, hit his finish. And then he took his last breath and his body went limp. I thought things had already gotten pretty strange, but now it got really creepy. Right after Jesus died, there there was an earthquake And this was no ordinary earthquake. The quake knocked over great rocks that covered the entrance to many caves where people had just recently been buried, who had had just recently died. And some of those people were even walking around the city. Word even began to spread very quickly that the earthquake had ripped the curtain that separated the holiest place, the most special place in the Jewish temple, the place where God was thought to live when he came to this world. Only the high priests, the the highest leaders of the Jewish religion were even allowed into that place. But now the curtain had been ripped in two from top to bottom. I later learned that the early Christians believed that signified that people no longer had to go through the priests to get to God, but now all people could go directly to God through Jesus, this man we had just crucified. One of the other soldiers at the scene of Jesus' crucifixion, after having seen and heard all these things, even said out loud, truly, this man was the Son of God. I didn't know what to think. After all, I was just doing my job. After we took Jesus' body down from the cross, Pilate ordered that it be given to a wealthy man named Joseph, who apparently had been a follower of Jesus who was, interestingly, a Jewish religious leader himself, but one who did not agree with what had been done. This Joseph wanted to bury Jesus in his own tomb, a new tomb, which had only been recently carved out of the rock on the side of a hill. And so he tenderly wrapped the lifeless body of Jesus in a burial cloth, placed him in his own tomb, and had it sealed with a great big stone that was rolled in front of the door, thus sealing the death of the Son of God.
The next day, some of the religious leaders that my group of soldiers reported to went to Pilate and told him that Jesus had once said that he would be raised from the dead in three days. They wanted Pilate to order that the tomb be guarded until the three days had passed. Well, Pilate told them to use some of those of us who were assigned to them to guard the tomb. I was one of those chosen. You see, not only was I a Roman soldier who was in Jerusalem during all these events, but I was one of the soldiers assigned to guard the tomb of Jesus and make sure no one took his body. I didn't really mind. After all, I was just doing my job. It had been a day since all those really strange events anyway, and this Jesus was still dead. Little did I know how well known that I would become to literally billions of Jesus' followers by the time you all would be born. I could still remember that Sunday morning as if it was yesterday. It was very early and the sun's rays had just begun to come over the horizon when suddenly there was a bright light, brighter than anything I had ever seen in my life. And then out of nowhere appeared this man wearing bright white and with an appearance like lightning. I thought I was pretty tough, a real man, but I was scared half to death and passed out and fell to the ground. When I came to, the great stone in front of the cave had been rolled to the side, and the body of Jesus was gone. My fellow soldier and I, well, we were scared to death. We had failed our mission to guard the body, and we were afraid that we might get killed ourselves for it. We went and told the religious leaders that we were assigned to everything that had happened. They told us that they'd pay us a lot of money if we'd just lie and tell everybody that we had fallen asleep and that Jesus' followers had come during the night and taken and stolen his body. They said if we lied that they would stand up for us so that Pilate would not have us killed. Well, of course we would do it. Anything to save our skins. But there were so many people who later saw Jesus alive. I heard that Jesus even met with his closest followers. Well, except the one that, you know, turned him in and, and later killed himself, Judas. There were so many stories and Christianity began to spread all over the empire over the next several decades. Now I know that the one that I saw die is alive. He is alive. He is alive. Every broken, weary 
the spot between two thieves on the blameless prince of peace eaten battered scarred and scorned sacred head pierced by our thorns it is finished was his cry the perfect lamb was Our victory, our Savior chose the mercy tree. Hope oh, in the dark, that violent day, the whole earth quaked at love's display. Three days silent in the ground, this body born. For heaven's crown On that bright and glorious day Heaven opened up the grave He's alive and risen indeed Praise Him for the mercy tree Death has Well, dear friends, we know that Jesus is alive. We serve a risen Savior. He isn't dead. He really was raised from the dead by the power of God on that Easter Sunday morning nearly 2,000 years ago. And you know what? Just like that Roman soldier was doing his job, we have a job to do too. Our job is to proclaim to the world that Jesus is alive, that he has given his life, for the sins of all, and that if they will just by faith receive God's forgiveness for their sins for which Jesus died, he will be as alive in their lives as he is in ours. Tell them, don't worry about someone making fun of you or, or not listening or accepting what you have to say. Just tell them, tell them with words and by our actions that the God who created them loves them and gave his life for them so that they might have new life abundant life, and eternal life. In the name of the one who conquered death, Jesus' name, we pray and this day celebrate. Amen and amen. Well, as we close this time together on this Easter Sunday, 2020, please join the Ignite team in singing Victory in Jesus, and may you and yours be joy-filled and blessed this Easter.